you know. <laughs> well, the thing is, though, when, when you start, it now pushes a notification out to subscribers. Eh? So then whenever we do try something, everyone jumps on. Not everyone, but a bunch of people do. Interesting. All right, it is live streaming on the proper channel. At first, I don't know why it was History Symposium, but. Can you hear me okay, Tom? Whoever that is, yes. That was Andrew. Excellent. Okay. Hi, Andrew. Oh, there's Bruce. Good afternoon. Well, I'm not going to worry too much about speaking to the audience over on the YouTube channel because I might be the only one watching so far. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm watching too, hey, Tom, but uh, it says there's only one person watching. So I wonder if it's uh, Tom just not updating <laughs> the. Um, it, Heritage Days was having that problem a couple of weeks ago too. It would, it was lagging behind how many people were watching. So there could be more. Oh well, I'm not too worried about it. It's it's largely there for the recording as well. So. Doesn't matter how many are watching. We will be starting at one o'clock sharp. So. Well, there's a few over there now, so. For all our participants here, I'm going to ask if you can uh, mute your microphones, turn your cameras off, and then at the appropriate time, I will prompt you to unmute and turn your camera on as you do your report back. And the nice thing with this going over to YouTube, it really just focuses on who's ever speaking. So, <laughs> with the time lag watching on the on the youtube stream watching the faces disappear have you figured that out there reg well i i muted myself but i can't turn the camera off i can't figure that out all right i can uh see if i can do that for you there you go Larry, much the same. Can you turn your camera off? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure it out. Oh, here, I got it. Okay. Just a All right. And welcome, Chris. Can you do the same? Oh. I can mute, stop video. There, there we, we go. go. Perfect.
We are one o'clock. Uh, I think we're about ready to go, or we are ready to go. So I'm going to kick this off. Um, someone joins late, they can always go back uh, and watch the beginning and, and lag behind or go back and, and watch it afterwards. So welcome to our 2023 officer and NCO school. Um, you know, ideally we'd be all together, but then uh, we couldn't have quite as many people on the call. We have some people joining us from, from quite a distance away too. Uh, a lot of this is predicated on availability of barrack space. So we're hoping in 2024, as the world continues to reopen, um, you know, we can have access to a facility with barracks and, and make it possible for a whole bunch more people to join us live. And then we'll also have to work out how to do it as a hybrid event and have people be able to participate remotely as well. So uh, on the YouTube channel, people watching there do know that um, there's a live chat feature. You should see that to the right of the, the video. And we're moderating and monitoring that. And uh, so if you have questions or comments, put them in there. And then at the appropriate time, we'll try to bring those forward. And also know that the live stream is being recorded and that recording will be available afterwards. So the agenda for today, uh, in just a moment, I'm going to ask Craig to give us some opening remarks. We'll, we'll look at the season that was last year. Uh, we have quite a number of unit representatives on the call with us, and, and they will talk to us about uh, their unit states and their plans for this year. Uh, Matt Pandera will give us a, a overview on our, the artillery. And then Chris will look at our, our training and tactical goals for this coming season. Craig wants to speak a little bit about, you know, how we show proper respect as we have casualties on the field. And then I'll talk about the need to merge units at events and, and some of the practical considerations behind that. Uh, something we've seen online and, and may come up, uh, and, and that is public trying to corner one of our, our people and expressing concerns about colonialism, imperialism, anything like that. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about how to deal with that or some of the watchouts. Uh, we'll give an update on Waterloo 2025. Also talk about the New York gun laws. There's some confusion there and how that pertains to reenactors. And then Chris will look ahead to the 2023 season, you know, what's on the schedule. And then also we uh, have a, a matrix available showing what events, what Crown Forces staff will be at. And then also uh, Chris will talk about, you know, if you're at an event and there are no Crown Forces staff present, but a concern comes up, how do you deal with that? And then we're going to talk a little bit about how we manage succession planning on our staff and, and some things we've codified and put into the standing orders. Talk about in 2023, how we'll renew our group recruiting efforts. And then we'll ask Craig to close this out. So at this point, Craig, if you can unmute, put your camera on, and uh, you can give us the opening remarks. Well... Uh, thank you, Tom. Thank you for putting this all together uh, again. Um, it's uh, it's great to see everybody out here today. Uh, it's a good uh, it's a good group. It's a good crowd. Um, I'm not going to say too much in the opening uh, remarks. There's there's a few things that we're going to be coming back to over the course of this uh, this meeting. Um, I just wanted to say, like last year, of course, was kind of a quiet baseline season uh, that basically. It was a shakeout cruise for better, for lack of a better term. And Tom's going to fill us in a little bit more about that later. Um, this year does mark the return of Stony Creek. And with that, there's a, a whole bunch of insights that have come because of that. And uh, I'm going to be talking about those things later. Um, this is where the, the conversation about casualties and colonialism comes from. Uh, and what with uh, the, the city of Hamilton being the way that it is right now, the people who are running things. I mean, we've just had, uh, I don't know how many of you saw the note, but there's a, there's a fella who has been giving cemetery tours uh, of the Hamilton Cemetery uh, for 21 years. He has a BA in history at McMaster and uh, he, 
went to the city with this idea. The only thing that he requires from the city is an insurance policy. Um, and he's been giving, like I say, he's been giving these tours. He only missed one in 21 years uh, because of a wedding. Otherwise, uh, he's, he's you know, done all his own research, done, done all that. And, uh, and the city has decided that they are not going to insure him any longer and that they are going to take over that interpretation and get volunteers to take tours that have basically, I guess, been spoon fed to them. I don't know the details yet. Uh, when I find out, I'll let you know. But uh, that's the sort of atmosphere that we're in right now. And um, I'm going to be talking about that atmosphere again in, in a little bit. Uh, speaking of Stony Creek, uh, I just want to uh, once again reiterate May the 19th uh, on your calendar, if you can make it to the Legion, the Stony Creek Legion, we are going to be having a, um, they're, they're holding a, sort of a meet and greet. Uh, they wanted to have as many of, of us there in uniform in period clothing to um, to sort of promote the event since it's coming back. Um, and I think this is a very positive step because our relationship with the Legion in the past has been rather negative. And they are now making, uh, they're, they are now putting out a, a, a laurel to, to work with us. And, um, and they, they want to invite the press and the, uh, the alderman that helped us get Stony Creek back on the calendar. So uh, um, if you're available, that would be great. Uh, and if you're going to go, please identify to Chris, uh, Chris McKay. Thank you. Um, as far as galvanizing goes, the ability to galvanize, uh, I think that it sort of goes to something else that we're going to be talking about. Uh, Tom is going to be talking about later as far as the galvanizing goes. But one of the things we, we really would like to see people concentrating on in the drill right now, back to the basics, let's get everybody on the same page. So when you do galvanize, everybody's moving the same way. Um, it, it's just... Um, we, we've been away from it. It's been um, a long winter in comparison to other winters. And, uh, and we really do need to make sure that everybody is on the same page as far as the way that they're drilling and, uh, and safety. Other than that, I think we have the potential for a really good season. I mean, yesterday, like yesterday, last, sorry, last year's season was kind of a, kind of a shake, a, a shakedown cruise. This is us, I think, getting it all back on its feet. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand it back over to you, Tom, and uh, thank you all for coming. All right, thank you, Craig. Appreciate that. Uh, so let's look at 2022 on, on the right. Uh, these are events as they appeared on our schedule on the website uh, that that we've seen membership attend. Uh, I know that there were some other ones there. Uh, kind of the summary, uh, and this is my perspective. You know, we we started out events were small, um, uh, and I think people were reluctant to attend and, and be out in numbers. And, and as the season went on, um, confidence gained, numbers started to rise, but things were, were still lighter. You know, and I'll use Fort Erie as an example. Uh, Fort Erie was the event that felt the closest to being normal, but still, uh, I would say the numbers were, were far less than we've typically come to expect at Fort Erie, which is an extremely well attended event. And the other thing I noted was a general reluctance to cross the border from both sides, Americans coming into Canada and Canadians going into the U.S. And even as uh, border restrictions were eased or lifted, that, that still seemed to carry over. So uh, last year, I, I think, was just an amazing season being able to have events again after two years with, with very little to no activity. And um, it, it was great having some events and, and you, you know, that they, they really felt like we were on our way back. So I think that was the goal last year it was to get some events in, start to feel like the hobby was returning and, and reviewing this year as being a lot more of the same. And hopefully as the year goes along, people have, confidence and and come out in in better numbers and and we get a chance to polish our skills and, and be ready for 2024 so at this point i'm going to switch to the unit report backs we'll ask individual members to represent their units um i i will uh turn 
off, I'll stop sharing slides in a moment. So as it's your turn to speak, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself, your unit, your typical area of operation, how many active members you're expecting in, in 2023, and then what events your unit is a plan, planning on attending this year. So orders of presentation will follow uh, in this order. Um, the slide's going to go away, so I will call on an individual to, to present and, and represent them, and away we go. So give me a moment. Just stop sharing my screen. I don't know that Ross ever made it in here, uh, and I know he was trying to do a, a drums practice today and do this. So uh, Ross, are you in the house? All right, and then number two on the list, uh, Ed uh, Seifert from the Royal Marines. I, I know he had uh, sent me an email earlier today saying that a conflict come up and he wasn't sure he'd be able to attend. I, I don't see Ed here either. So then that takes us to Mr. Kevin Garrett. There you are, Kevin. Good morning. Actually, no, good afternoon, everyone. That's what I get for staying around the house all the time. Kevin Garrett here, company sergeant from the Grenadier Company of the Royal Scots, a first regiment of foot. Uh, generally headquartered in the London area, but we do have members scattered all the way to Ottawa at the moment and points in between. Our typical uh, area of operations is uh, basically uh, the Niagara Peninsula and uh, some points to the west. Um, as of today, uh, our unit has uh, 20 paid members on the rolls, uh, 15 of those uh, carry muskets. Um, we have uh, very few uh, women attached to our organization as uh, camp followers slash wives uh, due to some people leaving the holiday and uh, other considerations that I won't go into at this time. Uh, we expect to have reasonable showings yet uh, under strength from what we historically have uh, produced. Um, we're looking to have a, a reasonable number of people at Longwoods and uh, Fort Miggs. Uh, we are putting efforts behind Fort Miggs this year because we have a second platoon forming in Indiana, and we'd like to have the opportunity to both support Fort Meigs, which we have not uh, for several years, and to also meet up with our southern, southern cousins and uh, bring them along with respect to Crown Forces drill and uh, policy and procedures. Um, doesn't look like we'll have anything much at Stony Creek. Um, a small contingent for Fort George. Uh, looks like uh, 10 of us so far for Fort Erie and also um, a contingent going down to Mississinawa in Indiana in October, once again, to interoperate with uh, number two platoon. And that's about all I got right now. We're not getting as many of our people coming out to as many events. I think some people have kind of got out of the habit over the pandemic. We are making efforts to try to encourage everyone to get back with the program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate the update. And, and yes, uh, we hope as the season goes on, uh, you can get some of your folks re-engaged. Uh, all right. Now, uh, Mr. Larry Bernard, please. All right. I'm Larry Bernard. I'm the Sergeant of the Royal Scott Light Company. And... Uh, Basically, we're, uh, our area of operation is the same as Kevin. We are based out of the London area. We're the Upper Thames Military Reenactment Society is our official uh, group name. Uh, we also run the Longwoods event every year. So hopefully people come out to that. That's May 6th and 7th, just putting in a little plug there. Uh, and currently we have, I did not manage to obtain a uh, group list of of civilians for our group yet from Shana, but so far uh, I've done a count. We have 18 muskets on the field, the best I can determine. And we also have seven that are part of our, our gun crew. I just want to add, so 25 in the field, uh, because we do sometimes have some of those gun members uh, jump into the infantry if the cannon isn't on the field. 
I just want to make a quick note um, for those of you that are used to Joe Chason running the gun. Due to health issues, Joe is off for the season. He's on basically light duty. So there is uh, Jason Ball and I believe Ruth Ann Vuk will be uh, will be in charge of the gun. Maybe Matt will touch on that later. Uh, as far as events go, uh, we obviously in Longwoods, we are talking about sending at least a small group to Stony Creek, Fort George, Fort Erie, and we're hoping to get a crew to Megs as well to support, support an event over the border this year. Uh, that's big events for now. I'm sure we'll have some stragglers go to some of the other events as well as the season progresses. And I think that's it. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate that. Um, no, next up, Mr. Ian Burns, please. Hello, everybody. My name is Ian Burns. Uh, we do first uh, Royal Scots Center Company as uh, our secondary impression. Our first impression is Napoleonic. We do 42nd Royal Highlanders. Um, our home base is probably around the Virginia, Maryland area, although we do have some people up in Massachusetts. And there's a possibility of getting some people in Pennsylvania. We've got a couple of recruits coming in in that area. Um, active members, we've got six for the Royal Scots, eight to 10 for 42nd. And the events we're planning on going to right now are Fort George for 1812 and the uh, Brigade Napoleon GT at uh, Fort Erie this year. That should do it. Thank you, Ian. Moving right along, we're going to go to Mr. Andrew Bateman, please. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andrew Bateman. I represent the uh, 41st Regiment of Foot. We uh, are based in mostly in southern Ontario between, like I say, Toronto and Kitchener, but we also have a rate division down in Michigan and uh, Indiana, Ohio. Uh, we have about 27 members on the books. And uh, this year, our schedule... We've already been to uh, River Rays and we had about 10 people out, so that was pleasing. Uh, we've had a drill over the winter and continuing to work on our drill. And uh, our ca calendar for the summer includes uh, Longwoods, Fort Miggs, Stony Creek, Fort George, Fort Erie, and uh, possibly Bradley House. And that should do it. Thank you, Andrew. It takes me a moment to take some notes there. So uh, next up, the 49th Regiment, they are away at a garrison weekend. So I'm going to report on behalf of, of Ryan, who, who sent me this via email. So 49th Regiment, the Grenadiers, um, their home base, he describes as the Niagara region, says they have 16 active members and the events they expect to attend in 2023 are Longwoods, uh, Fort Wellington, which I believe is a, a training school for Eastern Ontario units, Stony Creek, Fort George, Fort Erie, the Napoleonic event, Dunvegan, Bradley House, and then uh, the Queenston Heights March. So that is the 49th Regiment. And then next, the 49th Regiment Center Company, Kyle Timmons. Hi, everybody. Yeah. So uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I think so, right? Yeah. Yes, you can. <laughs> Sorry, I was already <laughs> muted. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, it didn't look like it was going. Yeah, so I'm Kyle. Uh, I'm representing the uh, the 49th Center Company. Um, so I was recently just sort of made unit commander this last year. Uh, we're based mostly out of the Niagara region, and uh, we have about seven to eight active members. Um, you know, Ken keeps saying he's going to come out, but we, we don't know. Um, and we just got three new members this last year, so we're sort of rebuilding. Um, in terms of events, um, we're thinking of doing Stony Creek, Fort George, Fort Erie, and uh, maybe Bradley. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll see how the, uh, the year goes. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, next up, Reg, representing the 89th. I'll send Reg some prompts. Hello, hello, everybody. There you are. Perfect. 
I'm uh, Reg Bainbridge, uh, like, and uh, I'm the sergeant of the 89th Regiment of Foot, the Grenadier Company. Our home base is where I live, uh, Bimbrook, and people are either side of that, but Southern Ontario, for sure. We have um, 15 active members. Um, of that, uh, 10 are, are muskets. Um, and I had a number of events. I checked with everybody, and I figured it was about a six events this season. Uh, I know in force, uh, it'll be Stony Creek for sure. Um, a few at Fort George, uh, Siege of Fort Erie, and the Brigade Napoleonic. And later on in the year, some, some people have mentioned Dunbagan and um, Queenston Heights. But I'm not sure about total numbers at those events. I think about six events will have good enough numbers to stand on our own. Um, that's about it. Yes. Thank you, Reg. Okay. Uh, at this point, I see Ross was able to, to join us. I know Ross is also trying to run a, a, a drum for practice. So, Ross, I'll jump back to you if you want to report on the drums for 2023. Sure. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Thanks, Tom. Um, yeah, we're looking forward to this year. Uh, I expect us to have a good turnout for the major events that Crown Forces will be at this year, uh, starting at Longwoods. And um, um, we're working on developing some returns for this year and also looking forward to Waterloo 2025 and trying to massage our uh, repertoire uh, for that event. So um, we've got a lot of optimism in the group. We've got a few new members and uh, we're looking forward to kicking off 2023. So I'm sorry, Ross, you said Longwoods for 2023 and, and what else? Oh, I, I said uh, we'll be at the uh, other major events, for example, Stony Creek, Fort George, Fort Erie. Um, and uh, we're, uh, we're looking forward to uh, a great 2023. We're, Got great, uh, got some new members, and um, we're quite optimistic about uh, the campaign season ahead. Perfect, thank you. So, at this point, uh, picking up our order, so the second company of the first battalion, 95th Rifles, Mark Somerville. Mark. Um. Yep. Okay, my video isn't seeming to want to kick in just... Oh, there we go. A bit of a delay. Okay, uh, 95th reporting here. Um, we've got about uh, two dozen members, active members. Uh, we have... Uh, we're operating out of the Virginia PA area, uh, which also includes about a dozen events uh, this year. We will be north of the border for Fort Erie. Uh, and... Our membership is in the Virginia, PA, and Southern Ontario uh, regions. Thank you. I'm sorry there, Mark. Uh, are, I'm multitasking and, and I might have missed it. Are, are you doing 18, 12 events this year? And if so, which ones? Um, yeah, I I will probably be the only one attending 1812 events, and I'm hoping to make uh, Fort Erie, Fort George, and uh, a couple of other ones. Uh, just got some uh, logistical restrictions on getting towards Longwoods, which I'd love to make, but it's a bit far for me. Okay. All right. Next, we'll turn to uh, Second Company, Third Battalion, 95th Rifle. So, Kevin, are, are you on the call? Yes, I'm here. All right, take it away. Uh, so I'm the uh, company sergeant and quartermaster. Um, we, uh, 
operate mainly out of Michigan, Michigan and Minnesota. That's where our, our uh, camp trailer is with all the kitchen, et cetera. We have members in California uh, and Georgia as well. Uh, currently 10 active members, seven rifles, three camp followers slash wives, uh, three to five possible new recruits, two for sure. Uh, the events we've committed to so far, uh, two of us plan on flying from California for the Grand Tactique at Fort Erie, end of August, and Mrs. Sinwa in October. That's it. Great. Thank you. Look forward to, to seeing you at some of these events. Um, next up, the 100th Grenadiers. So, uh, uh, do we have Joshua on, on the call? There he is. Hey, Joshua. Hi, uh, Tom. So I'm Joshua McCoy. I'm the NCO for the 100th Regiment Grenadier Company. Um, we have about 10 people on the roll, picked up a couple of camp followers in the last, well, of the pandemic to now. Uh, we expect to see about four muskets on the field fairly reliably. Our events, we're pushing for Fort Erie, definitely. And, of course, Dunvegan's right in our backyard. Everything else, though, we're afraid maybe a little bit by ear. That's pretty well our report. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And now the, the 100th Regiment for William. Hello. Hey there. All right. So my name is William Sinka. Hopefully you guys can hear me. It's not showing up. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, yeah, perfect. So William Sinka, I represent the One Earth Regiment of Foot. Uh, we're based in Ottawa. We currently have 13 active members between muskets and field musicians. We will be uh, returning to our normal operation of hiring summer staff, which will give us a large amount of grenadiers and light infantry once again, as well as field musicians. The only events we'll be doing that are away from Ottawa uh, for Crown Forces are Fort George and probably Fort Erie. Thank you, William. So up next, uh, Royal Newfoundland Regiment Skinner's Company. So that would be Bruce. So, waiting on Bruce. Well, there we there. are. So I hey, finally Bruce. got it unmuted here. Let's see. Um, video, start video. There you are. There, Not finally. Clear. It was those boats over to Mackinac that, that held us up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good to see you. I'm looking forward to a good, a good 2023. I'm Bruce Nelson. I'm the sergeant with the Royal Newfoundland Regiment 7th Skinner's Company. On our list, we have about 14 total. However, only 11 to 12 of those are actually active on the field at any given time. Uh, in terms of events for this year, we have uh, we actually bypassed Ogdensburg, just as a note. I was talking to Tim Kreiderman, and we didn't feel comfortable about the borders, and there was things going on there. So as um, Tom has mentioned, and I, I guess maybe even um, David Moore might have a comment if he actually attended the event, that'd be, that'd be interesting to find out what happened. We have two drill sessions coming up, one at Dundurn, one at Stony Creek. Um, we, have, we will be attending Stony Creek for sure. And uh, we also have a decoration day associated with Dundurn Castle in the Hamilton Burlington area. Certainly looking forward to Fort George, Fort Erie, Brigade Napoleon, and uh, a favorite of ours, Fort Willow. Those are all group events and possibly individual participation at Bradley House and uh, Lundy's Lane if those, those things materialize. I think that's about it for us. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, Mr. Dave Brunel, please. There we go. Hi, everyone. Um, I represent the, well, 
I represent, uh, as, as many of you know, we have a amalgamated group with the Glengarry Light Infantry uh, that Ron uh, Phillips is the captain of, I'm the captain of the Royal or the Royal Newfoundland Regiment uh, Baldur's Company. And we also have another company called Armstrong's Company from Sault Ste. Marie that is encompassed into our organization. Our title name is the Historic Military Establishment of Upper Canada, which is our charitable, charitable name. And all three operate under that. So the area of operation is right across Ontario, mainly central Ontario between the Glengarry's and the Bulger's company, and of course, northern Ontario for Armstrong's company up in Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, in total, we have about 68 members right across the board from soldiers, civilians, and artillery. Uh, probably about 40% of those are active in regards to either performing artillery or muskets, uh, you know, in, in musket firing. Uh, events that we will be attending this year, other than local events and garrison events that we do locally uh, for the Glens and the Royal Newfoundland Regiment, we, we are planning to attend Longwoods as the Glengarry Light Infantry, uh, Fort George as the Royal Newfoundland Regiment, Fort Erie as the Glens, and then uh, the Bradford, or sorry, uh, Bradford House, Bradley House, sorry, not Bradford House, uh, hopefully in October. And I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Now we'll turn to uh, one of your affiliate units that was referenced, uh, Mr. Phillips. Good afternoon, Ron Phillips, the uh, captain with the Glengarry Light Infantry. And pretty much Dave covered everything. And they said we do split between the uh, Glengarry and Royal Newfoundland Regiment, depending on the events and the members attending. Um, generally, when we're going GLI on the larger events, we can put uh, roughly 10 to 12 people on the on the field with between the officers and the muskets. That's pretty much it. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate that. Uh, and now there is another GLI from Eastern Ontario. Jim? Uh, yeah. Um, can you hear me? Good. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm uh, from Eastern Ontario, uh, the Glengarry Light Infantry. We're the McDonnell's company. Uh, our area is um, encompasses Glengarry County of Upper Canada. Um, and we have about 25 active members and 10 muskets. Um, we, our members are pretty much spread all over um, Eastern Ontario, as well as uh, Quebec, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia. And uh, we're looking at potentially five events this year. Um, we may have a small uh, group of us going to Stony Creek, um, and we're also eyeballing Fort Erie, and of course, Dunvegan in our own backyard um, will be an all-in event. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, next up, Mr. Dave Moore. There he is. Hello. Um, so David Moore with the Canadian Fencibles. Our unit is mostly out of Eastern Ontario. Um, the sergeant tells me we now have 35 musketmen, two NCOs, uh, two junior officers, and myself. This year, we're planning on doing Fort Erie, actually, in a large way. I probably would be a token member down at Stony Creek, just doing a drive-by. Um, uh, we did do Ogdensburg earlier this year. Because of the New York gun laws, in fact, we didn't take muskets across. We took wooden muskets across, took part in the event shouting bang, and... Um, did it as a protest. And uh, the members of our unit who are with uh, Canada Border Services uh, tell us that uh, um, that's probably the best policy for now until they change the law. I've been in touch with a number of different uh, people, uh, both municipally and uh, at the state level. And they're working, they tell me, on changing the law in New York. But I understand Tom's going to discuss that further and might have more up-to-date information than me. Um, Last year as well, we did the uh, salute to the Queen at Fort Wellington, and I just wanted to make a point of thanking Parks Canada as well for allowing us to do a 96-gun salute at uh, Fort Wellington at the day of the Queen's funeral. And that's it. Thank you, Dave. Uh, yes, and you're right. I do have some more to report on the New York State gun laws. 
Uh, but first, let's continue with these unit reports. Next up, uh, Jackie. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Jackie Durham with the Incorporated Militia of Upper Canada, uh, more specifically, actually, the Military Reenactment Society. Uh, as Dave Brunel had said, uh, we have several units under our umbrella, and uh, that includes uh, the Incorporated Militia of Upper Canada, the Incorporated Militia Artillery Company, as well as our camp followers. Uh, we have currently insured 82 members, uh, which includes IMAC, IMAC, our camp followers, and our children. Uh, and what we feel will uh, vary depending on which events uh, or which members show up to which events. We are looking at attending quite a few events this summer as, as usual. Uh, Longwoods, we have an education, uh, two days education at Georgina Pioneer Village. We'll be at Stony Creek, Fort George, Fort Erie, the Brigade Napoleon, Fort Willow, uh, which is a little bit becoming our home base. Uh, they've invited us to do a couple of extra weekends there. If we can uh, squeeze them into our schedule. We do primarily operate out of the GTA, and ha but have members from all over as well. Um, some of the other events that we are talking about event, uh, attending or that members have expressed interest in are Bradley House. Uh, we did attend Ogdensburg as well. Fort Meg's Sharon Temple, uh, which is more of an 1837 event, uh, Dunvegan, Fort Niagara, and Mississippi. So that's uh, where we're looking at for this year. We've done some off-season drills. We've got three in the books now. We've got one more to go. And uh, like Tom was saying at the beginning, we are very much focusing on back to basics. We've got some guys who haven't been out since the pandemic. And uh, we're kind of trying the bring a friend approach to drill because those of us that attend drill, of course, you know, are those that less need to be there than those that don't attend. And that's <laughs> those are the people at drill or on the field that you can tell they didn't go to drill and those guys did. So anyway, thank you uh, for listening. Great. Isn't that always the way? So thank you, Jackie. Uh, representing the forces of Lord Selkirk, Andrew. Thank you, Tom. Just out there. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew. I am the uh, unit CEO and uh, representative for the forces of Lord Selkirk. Uh, we uh, portray the uh, regiments de Miron and de Wattville. Um, our base operations, well, we're the only 1812 group in uh, Manitoba, so far as I'm aware. So we lay claim to the whole province of Manitoba for our home base. Um, but we are uh, nominally located in Winnipeg and always recruiting. Um, our unit tally is uh, 16 paid members currently. Uh, about 14 of those uh, are musket equipped. Um, however, how many we could uh, be able to field at uh, an event uh, in Ontario um, is always dubious because of uh, distance and, uh, and travel commitments from our members. Um, I would be pleased if uh, I saw eight to 10 of our members uh, come out at events here in Manitoba. Um, and I'd be even more pleased if we got some to come out to Ontario as well. Uh, this year, uh, we have uh, at least one member that I am aware of uh, going to both uh, Fort Meigs and Stony Creek. Um, but we're going to uh, try and put it out to our membership to see if we can uh, wrangle a few more people to to attend uh, an event down east, uh, if that's at all possible this year. Um, and that is all that we have uh, from from here. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate the, the report, and and then hopefully we, we do see some of your membership at, at events, and and let us know in advance. We'll, we'll do our best to place them with a the unit and, and make sure that they're comfortable and safe and have a good time. So. Uh, next up, 2nd York Regiment, um, Mr. Phil Booker, please. Sorry, just trying to get unmuted there. Uh, my apologies, my camera is out. Uh, Phil Booker, uh, Color Sergeant with the 2nd Regiment of York Militia, Thompson's Company. We're based in the historic uh, Grange House uh, in 
bustling metropolis of Mississauga in the GTA Toronto area. Uh, we currently have uh, active uh, men at arms uh, 15 and comp uh, camp followers uh, six. Uh, we're looking at attending Stony Creek, Fort George, Fort Erie, and of course, uh, Bradley House in Mississauga in October. That is uh, my report on behalf of uh, uh, Captain Greg uh, Carrero, Carrero our, uh, our captain. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Good stuff. Uh, Lennox Militia. So, John? Uh, hi. Uh, so, I'm John reporting for the Lennox Militia. We have uh, currently, I think, about three members, of two being one being a camp follower, two uh, having muskets and being on the field. Uh, unit morale is good. We're looking forward to getting out this, there this year. We're looking to go to Dunvegan as well as to events in the Niagara region. And that's it for my unit. All right. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, Chris Mills for the Canadian Corps of Voyageurs. Good afternoon. Anyway, um, Chris Mills, Canadian Corps of Voyageurs. Chris, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but your audio isn't very clear. I don't know oh. if you can change something there or get closer. Uh, probably just speak louder. Hello? Wait. Yeah. Can you hear me now? A little bit better. All right, try that. Um, where is the militia? With uh, William Gilby, uh, over in historical park, and the regiment is a new arm. We have 77 members on the books. We have 14 on the field. The 22nd is a lot of students. Well, we have a uh, great one that opened the door. That's the best That's the best one. 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 I'm sorry, Chris. I, I I don't know if it's rendering better on YouTube, but it, it's the audio isn't coming through at, at all. So, um. Perhaps try exiting um, the Zoom call and, and coming back in, and, and we'll try you. Some, sometimes it resets and, and is better. And then uh, when I see you come back in, we'll, we'll give it another try. So, all right. Uh, waiting on Chris, what we'll do is move along. I guess first I should ask that. Did I miss anyone? I tried to keep track of everyone that was scheduled to attend. Um, if I missed you, put you in the chat. Otherwise, we're going to move to, to Matt Pindera next. So, Matt, if you can uh, unmask yourself. There I am. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Matt Pandera. I'm the uh, artillery commander for the uh, Crown Forces. My personal impression uh, is uh, a Royal Artillery Captain. My home unit is the Schooner Nancy or the Nancy Gun Crew, as we call ourselves. We're based uh, really all across Southern Ontario. Uh, myself and uh, one or two other members are in the Barrie area. Uh, I've been in Barrie for 31 years myself now. Uh, 
since the last um, officer NCO forum held in held in 22, um, I have retired uh, from pipe fitting and I find I'm now busier than ever. I don't know how that works, but that's the way it is. Uh, for the past several years, um, the artillery in the in, under the Crown Forces organization, uh, we've lost pretty much uh, three active uh, gun crews. Uh, predominant causes for for the dropout. Number one is the age, the age of the crews. Uh, we've had a, a couple of people, as we know, like uh, for instance, John Bowman, who was with the Lincoln Company, uh, has passed away. And uh, they've also just like just like the infantry companies, they've struggled in uh, uh, keeping their their members uh, participating or coming out and keeping the uh, interest up. Uh, some of them have just retired out from the hobby, uh, and uh, others uh, probably you know have issues driving now. Maybe all kinds of things. Uh, so I, I do I do like to put the little dig in that if you're an infantryman and you're not really being able to keep up as well anymore. Instead of retiring out of the hobby, give us a try. Gunline's always looking for, for new members. Uh, current current active gun gun crews under the Crown Forces, we've, we've got about seven. We still have about seven or so very fairly active units. Under the Royal Artillery banner, we've got the uh, our six pounder, the seventh company or battle axe company. Uh, fourth company, Captain Caddies. We do see defensibles out a little more often, which is which is great. And I'd like to talk to John Bradshaw about a few things. Under the naval impressions, we've got uh, my home group, the Nancy. We've got the Earl of Moira, Provincial Marine, and the Royal George, which are all still fairly active. We've got projected event attendance issues. Um, I work with which groups show up. Um, even if I if I'm told, you know, I'm going to be expecting five guns. Often one won't make it. And that's that's something that's just as simple as if uh, there's a mechanical failure in the pickup truck that hauls the trailer with the gun, or the person who who is supposed to be doing that has to suddenly work, whatever, or or is ill. No, nothing we can do about it. So if I was expecting five and I have four, then we proceed with four. I've been utilizing the uh, morning state type paper uh, and have the, uh, the units fill these out so that I can use these as a reference tool actually for later. So I, I know just by looking at this that last year's Longwoods, uh, Bose and Murray was running the Nancy gun crew that weekend and we had eight people there. And I can go through pretty much the same for any other unit was there. So I'm, I'm hoping that keeping a, a, this as a good reference tool uh, helps me project who I might have at any given weekend. Uh, I also do my best to communicate with the artillery units that that uh, if uh, the person that is pulling the gun can't make it, that doesn't mean that the crew can't come down and help with other crews. And uh, this has actually been working fairly well. We've had a couple of events last year where um, I got a call, we can't bring our gun, but I got three people that still want to go, send them along. Because we've harmonized homogenized sort of the, 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 the gun drill on the field now. Uh, and and uh, most of the gun crews know each other fairly well. So everybody's pretty comfortable and confident with, uh, with, with sharing people. On March 13th, uh, a week previous to the staff meeting that was held, I think on the 18th, that Monday, uh, the artillery, we, we held a Zoom uh, meeting of our own. Um, this gives me the opportunity to, to uh, converse directly to the gunners uh, or, you know, the gun captains of the artillery organizations involved with the Crown Forces. Uh, as usual, an overview of the Crown Forces operating a regimental structure and the artillery's operating structure uh, within, within, that, within that framework, as well as uh, we, we, we off, I often like to touch on the Crown Forces standing orders because they do apply to artillery as well as, as infantry. Larry Bernard mentioned uh, Joe Chason's situation. He's battle axe with seven companies, sar sergeant, uh, 
he's recovering from triple bypass surgery. And when I was speaking to him last, he said his recovery was, was very well going along, progressing very well. So I'm sure we'll be seeing him out in the field next season. Uh, for this year, uh, like I said, um, I, I'm not, I'm not going to speculate right now as to what gun groups are going to show up. Um, but we've always make do, we always have, and we've always been able to provide artillery on the field for, for events. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll part by saying the appreci artillery appreciates and enjoys enhancing the overall 1812 experience, uh, in the encampment. And on the battlefield scenario, and within the battlefield, and 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 in the scenario, um, so that the experience for all those that are um, on the field participating or attending, and spe spectators. So thank you. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Chris, do you want to try unmuting and turn your camera on again, and and let's see if this goes better. Cross my fingers. All right. Can you hear me now? Oh, dramatically better. Yes, thank you. Uh, that, I think that was operator mistake going on there. Okay, so uh, Chris Mills, we are the Canadian Corps of Voyageurs out of Fort William Historical Park in Thunder Bay. Uh, we also, that's so that's a Voyageur militia through with uh, our commanding officer, William McGilvery. We um, also do Regiment Muron, and uh, we're not going to be doing, well, we have people looking at Stony Creek and Fort Meigs because they're close. Um, they're close together in uh, time. But uh, our main focus is we have a 50th anniversary rendezvous at Fort William Historical Park. It's a Voyager rendezvous. Um, fort started in uh, uh, 1973, uh, so we have a focus on that, which kind of takes a lot of our time out because that's in July 13th to 16th. But we will be attending, um, we were looking at attending uh, Mackinac, and we have a timeline event that I know you guys shake your head at, um, at Albert Lee in October, which is 4th to 9th. A um, little out of, out of, so we have 27 individuals in our group, and we could field uh, 13 to 14 individuals at any given time. Great. I'm glad uh, we did a reset and, and we we're able to get that in there. So appreciate that. All right. At this point, I'm going to ask Chris McKay uh, to cover off this slide. And yes, that one. Hi, everybody. Thanks. Uh, Thanks to everybody for coming out today. Um, just um, a little off script before I get to this slide. Um, thanks everybody for those unit states. Uh, it's great to see everybody and, and hear how well your groups are doing. Um, over the past three years, I know there's been a number of changes uh, in some group structures. And I wanna say thank you. A lot of people have been really good at keeping us, you know, the entire staff up to date on changes and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, if there are any changes going forward, you know, um, I'm the new sergeant for this group or I'm the new company commander for this group. If you don't mind sending um, one of us a quick email just to make sure we're in, we're in the loop and we can keep our um, sort of methods of lines of communication open, that that's really helpful. So thank you for that. Um, training goals. Um, you may be a little surprised to hear this coming from me rather than um, your usual training leaders, you and, and Colin. Um, unfortunately, they couldn't be on today, so I'm just going to be speaking on their behalf. Um, as lots of people, starting with, with Craig and Tom and our unit commanders have mentioned, um, last year was really about getting back to the basics and getting people back up and running after being out for uh, two and coming up on three years now. Um, we're going to continue that same trend this year, um, back to basics, um, really firming up any drill, especially firing several several of the unit commanders mentioned. Um, and also, um, as Tom said, some smaller events last year. So as we build back, hopefully this year, uh, putting those 
basics back together and into the bigger building blocks. So more working with other units in the battalion and that sort of thing. And so we will um, look forward to starting that at Longwoods. It was great to hear so many people will be there. So we'll look forward to starting that at Longwoods in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Chris. And now uh, we'll turn to Craig. Okay. <clears throat> Before I start on this, I just want to remind everyone, please register for events. Um, can't hit that quite so hard enough as it is. Um, with the ongoing problems with historic sites, um, you have to remember that years and years ago, uh, when I first started in this hobby, uh, 40 <clears throat> years ago, um, one of the one of the things that came up was there were not that many sites that would allow you, first of all, to go in and demonstrate on their site or do opposed line uh, tactical. So we slowly convinced them that we knew what we were doing and we're safe and all that. Uh, but now there's there's sort of a, a new breed of museum people who want to apply museum standards to historic sites, which, as you know, is kind of mildly opposed to one another. Uh, a lot of historic sites have museums on them, but they aren't really the same thing. And we have to be gentle about how we convince them <laughs> it's a different thing, uh, because there's, a, there's some people who have their minds set toward um, not allowing this. Now, one of the things that comes up in discussion, and this came up during um, the discussions trying to get um, the Stony Creek eradicated, uh, did not come, it, well, it sort of came back a little bit during the negotiation to get it back on again. <clears throat> Pardon me. And one of the, the problems is, is when we take casualties on the field, um, I want the first thing I want to do is I, I know it's, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, but one of the things I, I want to do is, is just reiterate to people that we're here to honor those who gave us the gift of nation, uh, the people who stood at the sharp end and gave their lives uh, in these battles. And I don't think that we should be encouraging people to make the most spectacular pratfalls. And uh, I certainly don't think that people should be lying on the ground giggling or smiling in photographs or laying on top of somebody else to take a picture of somebody else. Um, we, we, we just, I think we need to strengthen or in, um, inform our members that one of the things that comes up is people think that, uh, there are certain people I, I, I think that we're not taking this seriously enough and we're misrepresenting and that, you know, we really ought not to be communicating that war is some, somehow fun. Um, now, that voice, as Tom and other people know, came really from one specific individual who will remain nameless, uh, but the, the point that he was making is well taken. When we do memorial services, uh, we're, we're, you know, we are, I, I think, very good at representing the, you know, the, the the feel of what that should be, should be. But when we're on the field, I think we really need to not turn this into a comic opportunity. We need to show that this is a serious thing for us. You can talk about it back in camp all you want, make jokes, make whatever, because we know what we're doing. Um, I mean, you, you really do have to take a look at the theatricality of what we do. We're putting on a demonstration. We are putting on a presentation. And if we're not representing that properly, then we're really not doing justice to the people who stood at the sharp end and gave their lives. So uh, I, I just wanted to make sure that... <sighs> That we uh, th that we are sort of focusing uh, our attention, and we need. I, I think um, I think we need to uh, just remind our members. You know, you know, st you know. You take a casualty, you go down, whatever. Uh, if you're going to be careful about it, you go down in the shade, as we all know. Um, and then 
just remain there and we always bring out the drums to play the lament and once they played the lament you can automatically at the end of the lament get back up brush yourself off pop your cap back on make sure your 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 muskets clear and fall in with your unit um in a respectful manner i think is probably the the best phrase to use in this um and i think that's probably the most i want to say about this subject right now thank you tom thank you craig all right, I'm just going to speak for a moment on this galvanization. Uh, basically, it means, you know, for small units, we're going to combine. Uh, and, and there's some reasons behind that. So the, the this was a deliberate choice of image. This is from Waterloo in 2015, uh, the brigade we were in. And, and um, to prepare for Waterloo, you know, we settled on optimum uh, unit sizes or company sizes, if you will, and and that allowed us to maneuver very effectively on the battlefield to march from camp to the battlefield uh, on and on. So, uh, I guess our ask to you is, uh, if you're coming to an event with you know three or four muskets, uh, you know, you you can't put together um you know two ranks then then let us know in advance and and we'll find a, a unit for you to fall into uh if you're an officer and and it's looking like the event you only have a handful of muskets then maybe check in with us to see if there's a staff role you could help with otherwise suggest that that you will carry a, a musket for that unit knowing that that your small group will fall in with another one it, it just makes a better looking parade you, you know if everyone's fallen in in the same fashion and it makes for uh, a better composition of, of wings and divisions and, and general overall movement so just wanted everyone to be clear in their understanding that as the season goes along uh small units we're going to look to place them with another group so that there'll be a degree of amalgamation all right so with that, I'm going to turn it back to Craig for the next topic. Hello, I'd like to complain. <laughs> there you go. There's your Monty Python uh, reference. Um, this is, of course, a very loaded subject matter. I'm going to try and cruise through it as quickly as possible. Uh, there are ongoing concerns, complaints, not coming from us, rarely coming from um, members of the public directly. A lot is coming from uh, municipalities and historic sites, uh, the same ones that are, you know, uh, want to apply museum rules to historic sites, those kind of people. Um, about uh, representing colonialism, as we know, um, as we know, that's one of the main problems with what's happened to Fort York is they have been painted into a corner. Uh, they, they, they currently have a problem with, um, they had one head of curatorial staff that said, no, we can't have the, the flag flying, the British flag flying because it's triggering to some people. We can't have red coats. We can't have muskets firing. It's, it's, it's too, you know, it's too colonial. It's too tr triggering. And, um, you know, and of course, these people who are doing this are not always historians. First of all, that, that that's the problem. They're very often politicians, and and so again, we have to be gentle with them, because <clears throat> we know politicians can be uh, thick as a plank, and about a half as useful. Um, anyway, um, we get uh, complaints about glorifying uh, colonialism. Um, some things that. Uh, some notes that I, I've taken away from this. First of all, beware of influencers or press baiting you into this discussion. If you're not comfortable talking about this, uh, I would strongly recommend that you either defer said reporter or influencer to the site, one of the site staff, or in lieu of them, one of the staff, like myself or or Tom or something, um, 
it's a very it's a very dangerous minefield. Uh, all you have to do is say two words wrong, and the next thing you know, uh, you're you're in the news, and you really don't want to be. Um, so you, the, the the problem is, of course, is that it, uh, a lot of people look at this colonialism as the flag to fly, and they don't recognize that you know that colonialism. You know, they, they they're going to lump that colonialism in with residential schools and uh, and, and that form of colonialism and. That form of colonialism, which started in 1867, I think you'll probably see the significance of that date, uh, in 1867 uh, is of course the creation of the Indian Act. And the Indian Act is um, inequitable, anachronistic, hypocritical, uh, because it's still being used today to subjugate indigenous people, okay, even to this day. Um, if you if you want to get a very brief insight on on how just one small example of how it's used to this day, uh, do yourself a favor. CBC has a podcast called Land Back. Just listen to the first episode. You don't have to listen to the whole thing. Just listen to the first episode. It will it will be eye opening for you. Um, Canada is our country, and its reputation sucks as far as its dealings with indigenous people. Um, I personally, my feeling has, has always been that our treatment of the indigenous people has been criminal. And um, we've hid, hidden behind the Indian Act in order to get away with it. But that's not 1812. And that's the important thing to know is that it's not 1812. Um, 1812, the population of Canada was predominantly indigenous with a, you know, a much smaller group of colonists living here. Um, and those colonists knew that they could not fight the Americans without the help of the indigenous people. And they were treated with as separate nations. They weren't told you have to do this fight. They said, can you please come and help us fight? And the indigenous people could choose. Do I wanna fight this one or do I wanna sit this one out? Okay, there was a lot more, there was a lot more respect in that way, particularly by the people here who had to do that fight. Unfortunately, they got screwed, not only the people that are, you know, the, the, the British, the British uh, military and, and the indigenous people got screwed uh, at the end of the war, because when they signed the Treaty of Ghent, whoever it was who was thousands of miles away, thought it was okay to basically sell the indigenous people up the river, which is essentially what happened. Um, so I just want to glance down at my notes again and make sure I've covered everything I wanted to, um, to cover. This is, I think, an important uh, thing to, 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 to point up. The other thing that, you, uh, that, that comes up or doesn't come up surprisingly, um, that colonial Canada, in the, in the 1812 war, as we all know, was still a slave nation. We still had slavery here. Now, it was modified because, pardon me, uh, Simcoe, of course, brought in the Anti-Slavery Act. Um, he wanted to abolish slavery altogether, but because he was merely the governor general and there were still other people who had a great deal of power who lived here, um, he got the best deal he could at the time. Now. That's cold comfort, I guess, to us in the modern day, but it's not cold comfort to the people who had to live with it. And um, uh, you again, look up the Anti-Slavery Act if you don't know anything about it. It, it does it, it um, by today's standards. Uh, it did. It's not ideal by today's standards, but it did demonstrate an understanding of the wrongness, and it was an attempt to move the colony away from it. So. I just think that it's important to be able to answer that to people who ask. Um, I mean, you don't, again, don't have to, you don't have to, you know, pop it up out, out of a flare gun, but um, it's one of those things that we have to be aware of. Uh, people are very, very sensitive now. Um, you know, we have, we have a lot of sites and municipalities that are trying to control the messaging to the public. Um, and they want to do it by offering controlled uh, and approved content uh, to their voluntolds, uh, if you will. 
Uh, I've already mentioned what happened to Robin McKee earlier today. Um, but I, I also know that there are sites like Fort Niagara that are actually offering courses to reenactors and volunteers to teach them what they will accept as what they're saying to the public. Like they're in this case, at least being proactive and not just sort of standing back and going, you know, when you say, say something wrong, they're not standing back and say, you say, you've said something wrong. They're, 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 they're being proactive and saying, okay, we don't, we, we need you not to say this. We need you to say this if you're going to talk to the public. Um, is that a good thing? I don't know. I think it's probably better better in the sense that at least they're they're getting some control over the messaging. Um, but that I guess is a, a is a, is a topic for a much larger discussion. I think. But um, anyway, please please be aware of who and when you're talking to people. If you don't know the answer, if you don't know the right thing to say, defer it to one of us or defer it to a member of the staff and let them deal with it. Um, one of the nice things about what's happened with uh, Stony Creek is that um, because they knew they had a deficiency in this, uh, the city of Hamilton has hired one of our favorites, Travis Hill, who is now the curator of indig indigenous history and culture for the city of Hamilton. And uh, as we know, he's on our side. So uh, this is always a good thing but uh, don't rely on that completely. Just <laughs> be ready to pass these kind of hot potatoes on if you don't feel comfortable with it, okay? And I think that, that covers it, Tom, unless you think I've missed something. Great, thank you, Craig. Uh, that was well done. So um, I'm gonna move on to a different topic and, and look ahead to Waterloo 2025. Uh, I think a good part of our community went in 2015 and, and had a, a very good experience. Uh, certainly it's been one of the highlights of my reenacting career. And in 2025, we, we have the opportunity again, uh, they're gonna have a large scale event. Uh, and I think it's going to be capped numbers wise in terms of number of reenactors in the field. 2015 was uh, set somewhere between five and 6,000 reenactors. Uh, this will be much lower than that. I I'm hearing 2,500 to 3,000. So a way of saying uh, if people are interested, then they should get their name in. Um, this is a recap from, from the spreadsheet I'm tracking this on, uh, people that have indicated they have an interest. This isn't a firm commitment, is just an interest to attend and, and be on our list. So I'll send this out again, and then uh, I think we'll have to get to work at firming this up. Um, so if people have expressed an interest, then they are on the inside track and, and have first right of refusal. If our participation is limited or capped, uh, it might be hard to add more people. So be sure to share this out with your units. If people have an interest, then have them get that uh, little form into me. And then also, even if your unit's not going in numbers, it's all right. You know, someone can express an interest and, and we'll place them with a unit with which they're comfortable with. All right, so uh, look for a follow-up. I, I will send out that uh, form again, post it on the, the mailing list, and then also on the Facebook group page. But please be sure to pass that through to your membership. Uh, you have me again uh, looking at, at the New York State gun laws. So um, just looking at, at what was contentious around this, um, you know, I pulled this from the New York, state attorney general's office. So from 2022, uh, the measures sought to protect sensitive places such as parks, you know, barring the carrying of firearms. And, and that was the one area that caused concern. But also to be noted, 
is they had a reg, rather vague notion of dangerous or unusual weapons may be subject to further restrictions, but there wasn't any clear definition attached to that. Uh, so um, particularly artillery pieces, uh, uh, the, some of the, the various weapons that, that our people carry could fall into there. And then the other one uh, maybe hasn't gained enough attention but gun owners had to be very careful leaving a firearm in a car. And, and so the, the best advice was that transportation of a firearm is best done, uh, the firearm locked, uh, and then itself is locked into some kind of a, a lockbox, and then no ammunition in that case. So the ammunition is separated. Now, there is a new amendment proposed that will uh, maybe alleviate some of the re reenactors concerns. From my understanding, it does not take away the concern around the transportation of firearms. The problem is this new amendment has not yet been passed into law. Unfortunately, uh, or maybe it's New York State knows best how to work this, but it has been included as part of a budget act um, and that and some other amendments are, are part of the budget and the budget has yet to be passed and approved. And so that means there's been no change to the gun laws. So uh, I would suggest caution if you see a site saying they're going forward with an event on the basis of uh, an assemblyman or someone saying they've talked to local law enforcement and they're not going to enforce the law on the books. Um, I guess that's up to yourself and your unit and, and your degree of, of comfort as far as that goes. If we hear anything about the amendment being passed and approved, we will be sure to share that the moment we get confirmation on that. All right, I'm going to switch to Chris and then see what's in the chat here. So, all right. Um, and then Dave Moore says, and, and that's a good point. These gun law offenses are, are a criminal offense. So that is why uh, it, it's not just a fine or a slap on the wrist. It, it, it's a pretty significant charge if you get caught up in this. So, all right, Chris. Thanks, Tom. So we're going to look ahead to the 2023 schedule, um, but uh, unit commanders, you've already sort of gone through your list. So um, lots of these are already known to you. So I'm not going to go through the entire list, um, but I'm going to highlight a couple of points and then turn to the staff participation at some of these events as well. Um, so the first one uh, to highlight is obviously Longwood's coming up in a couple of weeks. The one I wanted to highlight about that, as Craig has said, um, please get your registrations in. Um, as I am the registrar for Longwoods, I can tell you exactly how many people have, have registered and it, it, we're missing some significant names. So um, we've asked for registrations by next weekend. Um, so you've got another week. If you are not 100% certain whether you've registered or not, feel free to shoot me an email and I can double check, but uh, that's coming up fast. So please get that in. Um, it's on the uh, Royal Scots website. Um, the next one to highlight uh, for Meg's coming up. Um, just a quick note that that event, um, not on our side, it, it won't be a Crown Forces organization, but the, uh, the US staff is making an effort to organize a memorial service for several of the reenactors that they've lost in the last few months. I'm sure many of you have known um, some of those reenactors and those names. So if that's something that you wanted to participate in, that will be happening at Fort Meigs. Um, of course, Stony Creek uh, back this year, very happy for that. Um, and uh, don't forget, not on the schedule, Craig also mentioned the launch party um, in May. If you um, are interested in joining joining us for that at the legion please make sure you send me an email um, and then i'm going to jump all the way down to fort erie and say that we on the crown forces side have also lost a number of reenactors over the past few years so we're probably looking at fort erie uh, in uh, in august 
to do some sort of um, memorial service on our side. Um, so as always, if you have any questions about any of the events, um, you know, feel free to shoot any of us an email. Um, but I'm just going to attempt to move. Um, sorry, I've got my Zoom window blocking half the screen. Um, so if you look at the uh, staff participation, we've um, had conversations in the past with unit commanders, and they always want to know what we'll be at. Um, so this gives you an idea. Um, starting at Longwoods, there'll be, um, you can see there'll be um, significant staff turnout. Um, Stony Creek, because it's back, it'll be a big turnout. Um, Fort George, Fort Erie, um, et cetera. So those are the, um, you can see yes means, uh, for example, yes, Craig will, or the Y means yes, Craig will be at Longwoods. Uh, N means Colin can't make it, unfortunately. Um, but if you have any questions about any of that, as I said, feel free to shoot us an email, but that gives you an idea. And I think if memory serves, I'm on the next topic too as well. Yes, so this one we called how to handle concerns at events with no Crown Forces staff. So um, nicely linking to the last slide where you see where we will be. Um, unfortunately, we can't, you know, it, there can't be a staff representative at every single event. Um, and sometimes things happen. So before I get too much into this topic, um, I think we need to just kind of remind people that we are, the Crown Forces staff are happy to help as much as we can in any way we can. That's what we're there for. We're, you know, we sort of serve at, at your pleasure, but we're not a police force. We don't really have any, you know, legal control over units. We, um, we, we work closely with the sites and we work closely with, with the units. Um, but we really, I mean, we have no real authority over people at the end of the day. Um, so if there are specifically, we're talking about safety concerns. Um, if there are safety concerns at an event and there's, there's no staff there, um, most people feel most comfortable bringing concerns to the staff, but if we're not present, um, we really have to ask you to take that to the site staff as soon as you can. Um, we were happy to help as best we can, but after the event, um, there's very little we can do um, about it. And there are some units out there that don't recognize our authority in any way. So, you know, we, we can't say to them, um, this was a safety concern because they <laughs> sort of don't care what we think, for lack of a better phrase. So really, um, your first um, your first step uh, on any safety concern should be, well, your first step should be um, ensuring the safety of your own people. Um, and that is something that um, we think you, you guys have done a fantastic job of. And we know that, that um, the people on this call, we, we know you're safe and we know you are looking out for the safety of your people. So thank you for that. So that needs to be your first concern. And then you need to take that as best you can to the site staff, um, because there's really nothing we can do the following week. Now, that being said, if it is an event that we are not at, and you've brought it to this, the site staff and, and something's happened or, or nothing's happened, please do keep us informed. We, you know, we, we do want to hear more about this and we, we do want to always troubleshoot as best we can. Um, but there's really, unfortunately, very little that we can do, you know, a week or two weeks after the, after the fact. So I think, I think that sort of, um, sums up what, what we want to say, um, uh, as, as best we can on that, on that note, Tom. Thank you, Chris.
Uh, at this point now, we'll, we'll turn this to succession planning. Uh, as I said in the opening, when I was reviewing the agenda, some of this come from previous meetings that, that we had and we got feedback, you know, just how does someone get chosen to, to be part of staff? So uh, we wanted to formalize that. Um, you can find those in our standing orders. And just a reminder, if you go to the Crown Forces North America website, you'll find our standing orders are available there as a, a PDF document that, that you can access. And then also, and then you'll find um, succession planning. Uh, um, uh, I think it might be under filling staff roles in the appendix, but right in the standing orders, there's also a role description for all people who are on staff. So I don't mean to read through all these points, but here's a quick sample laying out, uh, you know, how do we go about filling the staff roles? Um, give you a moment to digest that. But as I said, the best thing to do is, is to go to the website, look at it yourself, or come back to this point in the presentation, pause it and, and read it. And then there's a little bit more here where we talk about how do we identify uh, suitable candidates for positions that, that might be open. So, um, and you'll see examples of this already in action uh, with the pending vacancy in the general's ADC role, as Chris had announced his intent to uh, resign from that role as of the, the end of the season or, or post Fort Erie. So uh, you'll see us lay that out for openings as they come up. So at this point, I'd like to turn this back to Craig. Craig? Well, and having said that, Tom, um, as many of you know, I, I've been in this hobby for 47 years. I started off as the as a, a private in the uh, in the Eighth King's Regiment of Foot, working at Fort York. I put myself through college. I got the bug. I've done many many different periods. I've done many different 1812 impressions. Um, the greatest the greatest honor I've had is to be the general. Uh, to be the the brigadier general for the last six years has been even though, hey, we got stuck with the COVID years, but hey, um, it's, it's time to hand this off to the next person. It's time for me to go over the top and, um, and, let's, and let the process start going uphill at this point. I'm gonna let Tom describe what's coming, uh, how we're gonna do this in a second. I just wanted to take this moment to thank all of you for your confidence in me. I wanna thank you all for um, just, a wonderful experience that I've had uh, all through my reenacting career. I consider you all friends. Uh, I enjoy your company uh, and I'm not going away. Uh, I will be here. I, I will be doing something different. Um, I may be carrying a musket again. Uh, it's not like I can't do that. It's not like I don't know how. Um, I, I, I could be swinging a ramrod for the artillery. I don't know yet. But uh, what I will, I, I will be doing is still coming out to 1812 and still participating because uh, just because I'm not the guy who gets to tell people where to go and what to do doesn't mean that uh, I don't, in fact, I'll probably enjoy it more because it kind of, when you stand at the back like that, sometimes you just feel like a stage manager. But uh, you, as Tom has been learning. Anyway, um, the announcement will go out immediately after this meeting. Uh, Tom will post it. To, uh, to, to everybody. And, uh, and, and in that will also be the explanation of the, uh, of the process. But uh, I just wanted to tell you, you folks directly now, uh, get, you know, because I respect you all, um, I just wanted to make sure that you guys basically are, are, are the ones getting it first and it can further disseminate down from that. Um, yeah, uh, other than that, once again, thank you so much for the honor it has been uh just uh, it's just been amazing you're all you all do such a good job and and um yeah that's it for me tom well thank you craig for for sharing that and and thank you for for everything you've done for us particularly keeping our community together through some very difficult covid years um so the, the next steps, uh, 
I will push out first off the announcement that the pending change of command. I want to reiterate, Craig is with us as Brigadier General through the, the rest of this season. Uh, he's just giving lots of, of notice. Um, I will assume command January 1st, 2024. And then uh, we will put a posting out for the Lieutenant Colonel role so people have the opportunity to apply uh, the deadline for applications will be sometime roughly mid-June, uh, and that gives people a couple opportunities to have uh, in-person conversations with myself or Craig about the role, what it entails, and, and uh, if they wish they're, they're fit for that. So um, I, I think above and beyond everything, uh, thank you, Craig. Uh, you've been a great guiding light for us in the hobby and uh, especially managing us through some very difficult years. So thank you so much. You, uh, you are most welcome. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and we have, we just got a couple of slides as we wrap this up. Uh, wanted to reinforce that as we return to normal and our activity this year, that we'll uh, have more uh, recruiting efforts on behalf of Crown Forces, but but really the, the entire hobby, because uh, our recruiting portal, people do have the opportunity to express an interest in uh, whether it be a British or an American impression, Indigenous, civilian, uh, you know, Navy. So uh, we try to capture anyone as they surf, uh, surf the web. Uh, we do have an individual offering to set up a fly at major events and have it on merchants roll. So that'll be a bit of a recruiting station. And uh, now that we're getting back to events with numbers, I still got hundreds of little business cards, uh, size recruiting cards. So uh, if we could have people's help working the crowd lines and, and passing those out at events in the past, uh, it is amazing how much that, that has done to drive interest. And, and it's gratifying to see a number of recruits that have come through this process uh, now active with units out in the field. So we'll renew those efforts again this season. So now uh, our last slide where we're going to wrap this up and Craig, I'm going to ask if you could close out this meeting, please. Wow. Boy, if this were a union meeting, I'd just be calling for a uh, motion to adjourn. Um, yeah. I, I, um, just, just a, a, another note about that as, a, as is the usual, Tom will step up. I forgot to say this, Tom will step into my shoes and we will find a new Colonel. Um, and, uh, you know, make sure you go through, if you're going to do this, if you're going to apply for it, make sure you go through all of the steps that are listed and, um, and, and then, you know, get your name in. And then what we'll do is, is we'll basically give you an opportunity to take a battle or a couple of battles or, or whatever, depending on how many people we have to test. If it's, if it's a bunch, then it'll be a single battle. And if it's just one or two or three, then you'll get a whole weekend to prove, uh, to prove your, uh, your metal as it were. Uh, so in closing, I just like to say, thank you all for coming out today. Um, I hope it didn't shock too many of you. Uh, I did manage to, to shock you without taking my pants off. So I am impressed with myself <laughs> this time. Um, anyway, thank you all. And uh, we will see you soon on the field. Thank you.